Hello everyone, welcome to the Coin Brief Podcast, episode number 26. This is your open source for digital currency news. We talk about the latest developments in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space every week. And a huge story comes out this week uh, that no one really saw coming, it just kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, There's a particular technology company that um, started accepting Bitcoin for their online uh, payments wallet. Um, Evan, you you wanna you wanna announce uh, to our audience who this? Most people probably already know who it is, but uh, uh, just say the name. Well, I don't, I don't know. They're not they're not really that big. They're you know medium sized company, kind of <laughs> new. Um, the, they're called Microsoft. It's kind of a strange name. But, Microsoft. Um, what, yeah. what what kind of what kind of what kind of company are they? I haven't heard of this Microsoft uh, people. Well, they make they make software. They make this operating system called Windows. I'm not sure how popular it is yet. Windows. Um, they they make this thing called an Xbox. I don't. It. Oh, I have one of those. It, <laughs> um, but yeah, it Microsoft just randomly announced the other day that they were going to be, uh, launching like a limited acceptance of Bitcoin. You can pay for online services um what what exactly uh can you do you can do xbox live and what else so basically um they let you load up bitcoin to your microsoft account wallet on their little payments payments website and from there once you have your microsoft wallet loaded up with money you can use that to um pay for Microsoft software, programs, apps for Windows phones, uh, Windows 8.1, and presumably Windows 9 or 10, whatever. I think they're going to skip version 9 or something weird like that, go to Windows 10 directly. So pay for apps on that with Bitcoin. And then, of course, their entire gaming division, which includes the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One, you can... um, basically pay for digital downloads of video games through that service, pay for your Xbox Live subscription, yearly or monthly subscription to game online. Um, Pretty much basically anything in the Microsoft ecosystem that can be bought with your Microsoft account balance can now be funded by your Bitcoin. And they uh, have used... BitPay, the popular payment processor that has basically gotten all kinds of merchant adoption going this year in 2014. They've gotten BitPay to handle this for them. And it's super simple. You just go into your page. Uh, Normally, you've got your list of payment options lined up like credit card, PayPal, uh, debit card, I don't bank account, I think you can link it directly. And now there's a Bitcoin option, redeem Bitcoins. And click it. You can you can pick different increments. Uh, you can't do anything less than ten dollars this time. But it starts at ten dollars, and then fifteen, twenty-five, fifty, seventy-five, and a hundred dollar increments. And you pick that. It brings up the BitPay interface. Uh, you can use a QR code to scan with your smartphone app, or you just click Pay with Bitcoin, and it opens up the app from your desktop computer. And boom, simple as that. BitPay's processing is, is super fast. It's practically instant. It confirms with you don't even need one confirmation for BitPay to acknowledge your receipt of payment. And boom, your your money's in your Microsoft wallet to go spend however you please on anything Microsoft related. Uh pretty freaking awesome. When this news came out, uh like it was huge, kinda of blew my mind and and uh, I wrote a piece for Coin Brief on it, um, basically outlining what happened and what you can do now. This is a huge story. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, I was super surprised. I was actually getting ready to go to bed, I think. And it popped up on my Facebook feed, um, Coindesk, because I have Coindesk liked on Facebook. It's like, breaking news, Microsoft accepts Bitcoin. I was like, what? And, uh, but yeah, I've actually been... Um, back and forth trying to decide whether I want to go PS4 or Xbox One Mm -hmm. because um, here uh, 
PS4 has Xbox One beat like specs wise on their on the new console. Yes. Yeah. Um, but one, I have I have a really good online friend who lives really far away, and we talk on Xbox sometimes. He has an Xbox. That's that was one reason. Then also they, I can now pay for Xbox Live with Bitcoin, so that's definitely pretty much decided that I'm going to go with Xbox now, which is cool. Um, good for Microsoft too, I guess, because they're going to be getting my money um, and yeah. a lot of it because you know that stuff's expensive. Yeah. And uh, but that's that was the biggest thing for me because the most I have to do with Microsoft is video games because I. You know, I like Xbox. I have a 360 right now, um, and I haven't I haven't used Windows in a while. I've been using Linux, but if like if I get a computer uh, computer Windows on it, and I'll probably pay with Bitcoin, um, and it'll be pretty awesome. Plus, uh, CoinDesk followed up and said that um, there's some you know some kind of suspicion or rumor going around that Microsoft has a much larger vision for Bitcoin than just using it for, you know, virtual payments for Microsoft's various services, which yeah. is r really interesting. And I hope that's true because Microsoft is like, it's, it's probably like, you know, the, the most successful tech company, you know, there is right now. They've, They've made so much money over the years from their operating systems and their, you know, different software ventures. It's it's crazy that they're getting into Bitcoin because they have the the power and the ability to just like the world. Yeah, they're extremely influential. Obviously, one of the biggest names in technology ever since technology started revolutionizing society. And, you know, they've they've kind of been declining a little bit in relevancy the past few years as companies like Apple rose to prominence with the iPhones and their whole app store. Google rose to extreme prominence first off of their search engine, which kicked all kinds of ass. And then with Android operating system, which powers smartphones and tablets now and is the most popular OS for mobile devices. So Microsoft has been kind of, you know, uh, on on a decline a little bit in relevancy because uh, they, you know, uh, Windows Phone didn't quite catch on like they had hoped and other products of theirs besides the Xbox. The Xbox has been incredibly successful. Xbox 360 was probably the most successful console of that particular generation of video games. But everything else, you know, people not using Windows quite as much. Windows uh, OS was kind of a joke uh, when they first came out with, like, Windows 7 and then Windows 8 soon after that with a whole new redesign. But now they're kind of going in a different direction. A lot of their projects are now open source. Their old uh, .NET, .NET framework, which is a programming language or something like that, it's, uh, it's totally open source now. And now they're going after Bitcoin as a potential open source currency to build products on top of. And uh, Coindesk did an article on this basically talking about how uh, the Microsoft CEO, Sadia Nadella, has actually outlined a pretty global aggressive vision for implementing Bitcoin around the world, doing pretty interesting stuff with it besides just accepting it in exchange for their products. So there might be some pretty interesting stuff in the pipeline in terms of how Microsoft might approach Bitcoin. And it's also worth mentioning that just a couple months ago, uh, the co-founder of Microsoft, this, the one of the richest men in the world, Bill Gates, came out and said, he commented on Bitcoin and he said that it's actually pretty good technology. It's really good because transactions are cheap they're global, they can be transmitted instantly across the world, and the only thing he really kind of had a problem with was the anonymous nature and how it kind of allows criminal activity on the side, but what monetary system doesn't when there's incentives, great incentives for people to commit, commit some certain crimes, but uh, he does like the technology itself, 
And he certainly, even though he's not CEO anymore, he's not even chairman anymore, Bill Gates still has a considerable amount of influence at that company and may have influenced them to kind of go down the Bitcoin road. And I'm sure there's plenty of other smart people in that company as well who are looking into Bitcoin and the possibilities associated with that. So pretty interesting stuff coming down the road. We didn't, we, we didn't really see this uh, coming uh, down the road even just a week ago, this kind of came out of nowhere and it's like Microsoft is, is a player now. They're a big player in this. Yeah. It, uh, created a little slight little bump in the price too for a day or two. It it was fall. I didn't know this until after I saw that the news had like bumped it up, but it had fell below three fifty. But then, like almost immediately after the Microsoft news hit, it went up back up to three sixty, and I think it might have pushed three seventy at one point. That was that was cool because it's the first time, and this has actually affected the Bitcoin price. But it didn't it didn't last long because now we're back down to somewhere around three forty nine, three fifty. Last time I checked it, but yeah. it was you know interesting little instance of news finally. Uh, doing something to the price. Yeah, so like about the price, I think I mentioned last week on the podcast that my theory was that the price might drop a little bit thanks to Black Friday sales and payment processors like BitPay and Coinbase yep. kind of uh, selling off their massive reserves they might have built up during the Bit Black Friday sales. And we actually did see some of that. The, the price actually dropped uh, during the first half of the week from around 375 down to 350 and so that yeah that that might have very well been um, payment processors kind of getting rid of some of their reserves and then it kind of hovered around 350 for a day or two and started dropping a little bit more towards 340 but then once the Microsoft news hit once that came out that night like the price just just like complete total like 90 degree slope upwards 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 immediately uh up to almost 370 and that was pretty crazy just seeing that happen on the charts as it was going on at the same time people in the community were looking at the microsoft news and thinking wait a second so the one of the biggest technology companies in the whole world massively influential is getting in on the bitcoin game um bullish much uh, <laughs> so yeah it, it kind of went up there and then but since then it's uh it dropped a little bit and then rose a little bit back up to six uh to 360 again and now we're ho- hovering tediously around 350 so and that could just be more merchant selling pressure from the processors again kind of maybe cashing in just a little bit on the microsoft yeah, I, type I, I i think it is i think I think you're pretty spot on with that. I, I I agreed with you when you said that and I've been waiting on it for the past week or two and it's I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But I also think it's interesting that uh it's not like huge like huge giant waves of of downward pressure on the price cuz you know when uh Dell ac- accepted Bitcoin like 3 days later, you know, they we we speculated that they started dumping some of their re- their um, mm. Bitcoin revenue, which is what pretty much everyone agrees on, and it just sent the price into free fall. But this time it's um, it sent it from three seventy to three fifty, but it's been flowing in that within that range for you know a few weeks now. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting to to see the. The merchant pressure from Black Friday finally having having an effect, but it's not as big as merchant selling pressure has been in the past. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So maybe you know there's a little bit more strength in the market now that people continuing with their holding pattern, and maybe even you know buying some to offset the selling pressure, so the price doesn't drop below this range that it's been hovering in for the past few weeks. Right. Right. And, you know, for all we know, there could be brand new investors starting to enter the space now, both small time people and big time investors. I say uh, small time because 
Well, the change tip uh, tipping frenzy went viral in the past month, and you start seeing all kinds of people start asking about Bitcoin, when to learn about it, when to see what this whole thing is about. Why did this random person give them a thousand of these bits over Reddit? And kind of seeing, oh, wait, this is an alternative money, money system that is backed by mathematics and cryptography, and it seems pretty interesting. So maybe those people are starting to buy in too as well. And at the same time, we have uh, more institutional Wall Street pressure kind of heading towards the Bitcoin space a little bit. I don't think the Winklevoss ETF is open yet. I guess they're still working through the regulatory hurdles. They might be waiting until the bit license comes comes out to do that. But even if there isn't an official Bitcoin like fund on Wall Street, I'm pretty damn certain that there are some Wall Street individuals who might just be investing a little bit uh, with their personal funds on their personal time because they're in interested as well. Um, oh, there's there's yeah. got to be. Microsoft is is in on it, and the mainstream media has been you know giving little nods here and there to Bitcoin for a while now, like for the whole year basically. So there's got to be people on Wall Street who are putting you know a, just a, a little bit into it. Um, yeah, but for I them, think, a little bit could be yeah that could proportionally be a lot, several thousand. Or more, I I think Peter Schiff even has Bitcoin as much as uh, you know as much trash as he talks about Bitcoin. I bet you he has some. His yeah. company definitely has some because they accept uh, Bitcoin now for their gold and uh, other precious metal uh, purchases. And they use so BitPay, company, right? Yeah, but it's really it's it's really weird because um, the his company deals with such large amounts of uh, gold, such large orders, like their minimum order is $5,000, that for secure process every order over the phone. Mm. So doing it with Bitcoin through BitPay is kind of, it's a little bit more roundabout than it is with, you know, like, than it would be with Microsoft, for example. Uh, but yeah, mm. they, they use Bitcoin, or they use BitPay to accept Bitcoin for their precious metals. And so his company definitely has some, but I I bet you he, even he has some, because as much trash as he talks about Bitcoin, he has said several times that he wishes he had bought in earlier just so he could have made millions of dollars off of it. Hmm. So I guarantee you that he has some just in case it goes back to a thousand. Even you know even Peter Schiff as much as he hates it. So there. There be even so. There are people on Wall Street. Definitely, there has to be who are who are into Bitcoin, um, because the you know they're not all as crazy as Peter Schiff. He hates Bitcoin so much because he's people on Wall Street aren't. So there, yeah, there's got to be people who are experimenting with it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and uh, so that's that's adding some some buying pressure to the to the price for sure. And as for the whole like merchant selling payment processing uh, downward pressure, uh, like who like who knows when that'll reach equilibrium? Like we've we've talked about before. Like who knows when uh, uh, merchants will kind of either stop converting all of their Bitcoin to fiat and start taking larger and larger fractions in Bitcoin, and will the payment processors themselves? as they build up these Bitcoin reserves after processing the payments, uh, will they want to keep more and more hordes of Bitcoin? And I'm sure they don't want to crash the price. That's, that's the last thing what they want to do. They do care about the ecosystem. They do want to support it and they do want to see the price go up. So they're doing this very strategically. They don't want to send the price crashing below $300. I'm pretty sure they see 300 as like a, a kind of floor that they don't want to go below. The only way that I can see us maybe going below 300 is if uh, like some kind of large, like super early adopter, like Satoshi or one of his early miner brethren kind of starts selling off thousands of coins all at once. But that's kind of like a, a kind of like a doomsday scenario almost. And I feel like we would have, we would have right. seen that happen by now. We would have seen that happen earlier this year when the price was above 500. So, uh, I mean, this is, this is this is the most bullish that I that I felt about the price 
um, in, a, in a while, six to six months to a year probably. Um, so this is this is pretty good. This is pretty good. This Microsoft news overall. Um, bearish short term. Oh really? Uh, yeah, I think. Well, I think Microsoft is huge of news as that was. It still didn't keep the price up, but you know. Um, yeah. And even the little bump that it did produce, it didn't ma it didn't put it out of this range that it's been in for several weeks. So I think, you know, unless something huge happens, it's either going to stay sideways for a while or it's going to keep creeping downwards. I don't I don't want to speculate on how far down it will go. Maybe 300 is the the bottom that it'll go. That just depends on what, you know, how people feel about Bitcoin. Um but I think I I don't think it's going to be making like giant leaps and bounds upwards into the 500s and 600s anytime soon. Mm. Um, I'm looking at Coindesk's article on industry views of what Microsoft means for Bitcoin. They collected a bunch of quotes uh, by Bitcoin industry insiders, basically. I found this interesting quote by John Matonis, who's a uh, board member of the Bitcoin Foundation and um, actually uh, left to do a um, to counsel a, a different company, but he's a pretty smart guy. And he actually had an interesting quote about the Microsoft store. He says that we may be advancing beyond the phase where new merchants like Microsoft have any measurable effect on the price. So that's an interesting quote because this is like, we've kind of been saying this for months now that new merchants coming on board doesn't affect the price as much. But to say that that same thing about the Microsoft news um, that's, that's, that's kind of bold. Like, okay. Yeah. Even, even when Microsoft jumps on, jumps on board, all that'll happen is a short temporary $20 boost in price and then it'll drop back down. So maybe, maybe, maybe he's right that, uh, that this is kind of the last thing, like merchants don't affect the price anymore really that much. Yeah. That, that goes along with what we've been saying for a few months now that, uh, you know, Merchant adoption used to increase the Bitcoin price because uh, Bitcoin had to prove its legitimacy. People didn't want to buy in unless uh, you know they thought it was the real deal, and a large part of that was, well, what can I buy with it? Well, now that you can buy essentially everything, and we've had, you know, it's Overstock, Newegg, uh, Dish Network etc. All these uh, giant companies except Bitcoin, you can buy essentially anything you want now. Um, that's not, it's, it's already been proven legitimate. So whenever a new merchant accepts Bitcoin, we, we expect this because we can buy anything we want now. So we just expect everyone else is just catching up now. Right. So it's, it's going to be something different. It's going to be something far different from merchant adoption before you know news stories start uh affecting the price again i think it, when once we start seeing news about major companies paying wages in bitcoin i think yeah. stuff like that will increase the price but yeah i i agree with that john matonis quote and um i think it goes i think it, it's pretty much the same thing that we've been saying for a few months now yeah yeah, yeah. Everyone else is just playing catch up now. Google, Apple, you guys are far behind. Like Amazon, come on, man. Yeah, Amazon. Uh, so for now, I guess we just gotta use roundabout ways to ways to to use those services. Uh, you can buy apps now. You can buy apps on Microsoft products with with Bitcoin now. So now when Google inevitably comes out with their, oh, you can buy apps in the Google Play Store with Bitcoin, everyone's going to be like, okay, fine. But Microsoft was doing that months ago. Congratulations. Uh, well, I I would I would agree with you if Microsoft actually made decent stuff. I'm sorry, Microsoft, but your phones suck. Uh, 
Um, oh wait, so you're not you're not gonna go out and buy a Windows phone uh, off this no, Bitcoin news? I'm, I'll, I'll buy an Xbox once the price goes down a little bit, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my Samsung for now. All right. Uh, a Bitcoin but, billionaire isn't available yet on Windows Phone, so that's that's a that's kind I, of a... is is anything <laughs> available on Windows Phone? I don't know. I've never even okay. seen anyone who has one. But yeah, I I hate to say it, you know, Windows products pretty much suck. They they always they're always the first to try things, but they always fail at it. And other companies make like Apple make it better, and then it gets huge, uh, like. I don't know, I'm getting off topic now, but um, but Microsoft made the first smartphone like ten years before smartphones were even a thing, the, or the first touchscreen phone, and it completely sucked. But then Apple was like, "Hey, the, look at the look at our iPhone; it's pretty great, right?" And, and now revolutionized it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, now smartphones are the standard now, basically in the developed world, anyways. Yeah, just well, so we'll just wait till Apple <laughs> just gets on the digital currency but, train, but they'll. Their method will just, they'll probably create their, their own altcoin or something stupid like that. It'll be uh, iCoin that, that or something. That would be terrible. But, yeah, back, <laughs> but then back it'll, it'll be topic. seen as revolutionary just because Apple but, did it. But back on topic, I think, um, I think Bitcoin is really huge, but it's going to be even bigger when Android accepts it on their, um, on their Google Play Store. Yeah, but that's gonna the fact good. that you can buy Xbox games now uh, is with Bitcoin is pretty huge. I actually saw someone on Reddit um, talking about how huge it was for combating censorship uh, because hmm. now people who are under 18 can anonymously buy games on uh, M-rated games on Xbox with Bitcoin. Oh wow! Interesting. They get they get around the the rating laws. Or I don't know if it's a law, but you're not. Nobody's gonna sell you a game, an M-rated game, if you're under 17 or 18, whatever it is. I don't yeah. know if that's a law or not, or if that's I just something that's used in do, the United States. But, 17. Okay, well now, yeah, this guy was talking about how you can get it around that uh, with Bitcoin now, and that it, how it's just a freedom of expression, freedom of information, because yeah. they can't they can't censor games anymore. Yeah, and that's that's pretty huge. Um, yeah, in terms of like phones, mobile phones and stuff like that, it's going to be really big when Google and Android accept it, accept Bitcoin. Yeah, looking forward to that next year. I'm sure it'll happen next year yeah, sometime. Hopefully, hopefully sooner rather than later. Yeah. So um, let's move on to some bad news that came out this week. Uh, a hacking happened and 200, 267 Bitcoin were stolen uh, from blockchain.info users who use that wallet service uh this happened earlier in the week and there's this particular hacker that goes by the name joe ho on the bitcoin talk forums apparently he figured out a way to create a script that analyzes the entire blockchain for uh a particular set of data and if uh if a certain transaction has a certain um output or R, R value, two different R values. This is very technical uh, stuff, so I'm going to try and um, be as accurate as I can. But scans the blockchain for these particular values, and if a transaction has two identical R values, then somehow he can calculate what the private keys are for the, for the address. And once he has the private keys for the address, he can sweep the Bitcoin out of that address into his own wallet that he controls and he just did this analyze the entire blockchain over and over for these transactions and he found out that all of a sudden in one day there were 500 different transactions that all had this flaw in them and he was able to sweep all the coins out of there um, from this one day of transactions and then later found out that it it was all from blockchain.info there was some flaw with the way that they were creating transactions sent through the site and this guy was able to steal 267 bitcoins from users of blockchain.info through this hack and that comes out to about $93,000 at the current exchange rate and what how this story gets even crazier is that shortly after that he actually announced that he was going to return all the bitcoins to the users 
just as a good Samaritan tactic. And he said that, oh, I already make enough money at my day job to support me. And I don't want to get found out and like people coming after me with pitchforks and and torches over this hacking thing. So he just sent all the bitcoins back to users. Uh, he he sent a copy of his his script, his hacking code to blockchain.info so they can patch this up and and make this secure. So yeah, this someone basically hacked blockchain.info transactions, stole some bitcoin, and then gave it back. I believe they call that like a I think a black hat hacker or something. It's either black hat or white hat. Someone who probably, does these hacks. Probably white. White hat. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. Like, they just find these hacks and then notify the people of them. Not in any malicious way. Just like, hey, uh, you have this serious issue that I was able to exploit. If I was able to do it, someone else will be able to as well. And you should definitely fix it. So, yeah. Pretty interesting. Yeah. I think... I think a lot of companies actually hire people to hack their their networks to yeah. to find flaws like that. But yeah, it, this this story ended up having you know a happy ending after all. Everybody thought um, I, I saw people on Reddit saying like, "Oh, blockchain info is over. It, they're done for. Their credibility's been ruined because they're insecure now. They're on or they're unsafe." But mm. This guy got in touch with them, money, and he gave them, he told them how he did it so they can fix it, and uh, it ended up nobody is going to lose any money, and they see uh, blockchain is going to be able to solve a big problem. So, yeah, um, I think that this, this kind of tarnishes their reputation at least a little bit. Uh, even if he says they're safe and they say they're safe now, um, he actually he, he actually wrote on the Bitcoin Talk forums a couple days ago. He said that in principle it should be safe to use blockchain.info again, but I still see some bad transactions. Okay, that's not very reassuring. <laughs> he says that apparently it might be due to browser cache issues. So uh, if if you if you're using blockchain.info clear your cash, I guess, before you start sending transactions again. And, uh, but like it, there's, there's actually, there's better wallet solutions out there now than blockchain.info. And some of the ones that are touted as more reliable and more safe are hardware, hardware wallets like the Trezor, which basically stores your Bitcoin private keys on a separate device that like never touches the internet and can't be compromised by malicious code. Uh, so that's, that's a solution that the hacker himself actually uses to store his Bitcoin. And then there's actually even simpler, like cheaper options where you don't have to buy a separate device. Um, just use a hierarchical, hierarchical deterministic wallet AKA an HD wallet to store your Bitcoin and send transactions. And what that means is it creates a brand new wallet address for every single uh, uh, transaction that you receive. So basically it reduces the risk of a, of a single address um, getting, getting hacked or by, by some guy like this or uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just more secure all around. And it seems like these these are better options than storing it on blockchain.info right now. Do do you do you agree with that? I I agree, and I'll I'll also add that it's never it's never totally safe to store any significant amount of money on any online wallet, regardless of how safe they claim to be, because essentially you're you're taking Bitcoin, which you could be storing on some open source decentralized wallet that you can, um, you your private key can be as long as you want it to, make it as complicated as you want it to, have an encrypted back paper wallet and like, you know, bury it underground or something if you're crazy. Hmm. Um, and you just, you're giving all that up to put it on some centralized server that some company owns they could go down it or be hacked at any moment so regardless of the company's reputation uh i you should never put a lot of money 
in one of those online wallets and use it as like a bank or something. That's just, um, you know, if you're going to do that, just don't even bother with Bitcoin. Just keep using fiat. Uh, but I, I also think it's worth mentioning that um, early on, like like the day after this happened, I think, um, blockchain.info actually launched an Onion version of their website, Yeah. Uh, which was apparently, so, since you can access it on Tor, it's supposed to, uh, they said it would make it less likely for that hack to happen or whatever. I have an Onion website now, uh, which is really great for privacy. Yeah. Um, but the best way to go is always to use a, a desktop wallet. And they're getting, you know, safer and safer all the time because they're just everybody is worried about losing their bitcoin so all these uh wallet developers are competing with that with each other to make the safest one so there's a lot of great options out there and you shouldn't just um go with some random online wallet because it's easy yeah yeah like blockchain.info used to be one of the biggest most reliable names in the space like a year ago and it's kind of a shame to see them have have these security issues kind of not really ironed out. They're behind the curve on HD wallets. Uh, I've I've seen criticisms of their shared coin service, which is like a coin mixing thing built into blockchain.info. Uh, but there's criticisms of that that's not it's not totally anonymous. So uh, hey, I, I hope they kind of catch up and and implement HD wallets and kind of. Uh, basically make the site more secure. I don't know if this has anything to do with the fact that Andreas Antonopoulos left them as a security uh, guy um, earlier this year, but, uh, you know, they, they got to they gotta stay on top of this stuff. If some random guy can steal 267 bitcoins from users of your of your website because you aren't handling transactions correctly, that's, that's kind of a big deal. Uh, now that this, this kind of, this issue... This loophole has been uh, basically brought to the forefront of the community. No doubt, some people with more malicious intentions are kind of trying to do this exact same thing and see if they can shave off some extra transactions off these uh, bad, bad, uh, badly formed transactions. So they need to stay on top of this. Out and maybe people will learn their lesson, start using some more safer methods of storage. But yeah, I don't I don't think it's really going to hurt blockchain.info in the long run like it cuz news moves so fast in the Bitcoin community because it's entirely on the internet, which is just like lightning speed compared to um, you know, the physical world. 24-hour so, news cycle basically. Yeah, like a, like next Next week when we're doing podcast episode 27 or whatever it is, everybody's going to forget about it and they're going to be back to using their blockchain wallets. And uh, plus, you know, they're they're actively working on solving the problem. So it's in the future shouldn't even be an issue. Mm. But I I just wish people would, you know, learn their lesson and start using safer methods. Uh, take my own advice and use safer methods. I, I use, you know, an, an encrypted uh, desktop wallet, but I could always be safer, you know. Yeah. Um, it's just you're you're definitely with Bitcoin. You're responsible for your money. There's nobody that you can blame for losing your money like you can with fiat because it's all on you because you have complete control over it. Yep. So you need you should. You just got to take responsibility for it and be safe with your money. Yeah, even even in in my experience, like earlier this year, I used to I did used to use the blockchain dot info uh, Android wallet on my phone to store and manage my Bitcoin, and it was it was fine. I liked their user interface a lot. Um, pretty pretty easy to use. Edit the, edit the address book, and they added a merchant direct, directory local directory, which is pretty cool. But like there are random like weird glitches sometimes. Like I would open uh, open up my wallet and look at my wallet balance, and while the the amount of Bitcoin would be correct, the corresponding um, dollar amount that it that it's supposed to show how much money is in my wallet, it, the glitch would show like negative 
zero point one nine dollars, which is nine negative nineteen cents. And I'm like, okay, that is definitely not right. That's definitely <laughs> impossible. Uh, that's that's not a that's not a normal thing for a wallet to show. And I basically have to like shut down the app, kill the process on my phone, reopen it, and it would probably be back to normal. So I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. And um, after that, basically never really got ironed out in any sort of update. I just switched all my coins over to Mycelium, went back to Mycelium wallet, and uh, been using Mycelium since then. Mycelium uh, implements HD wallets like masterfully. It's perfect. Uh, you just receive a receive a payment, and then literally that's the only payment that ever goes into that one address because the very next payment you've got a new address to send into. So that increases privacy a little bit as well as security, and. Um, uh, all all the praise in the world to to mycelium. Um, I just wish I used their local trader feature more because that thing is pretty cool too. I actually have a, a similar story about a mobile wallet. I had some amount of Bitcoin. I don't remember what it was, and I don't remember what wallet I was using either. Uh, but there was there was some glitch with the wallet, and it said that it said that I had like nine million dollars worth. Um, and I was like, wait, what, what? Nice. There's, there's no way that can, there's <laughs> no way that can be true. And then I was like, but you know what, if, if I can get away with, uh, with, with selling it for $9 million, I'm going to do it. Um, yeah. And they just walk up I, on someone think, on the street and be like, I've got $9 million right here, which will pay me a thousand for this. You'll get a good deal. I think, I think the, um, the USD conversion uh, that they used came from one of the exchanges, and the exchange had a glitch. Oh, and and so that made the wallet mess up. But yeah, the um the wallet because of this glitch, the wallet was actually rendered completely useless. I couldn't do anything with my Bitcoin, um, and it was just stuck in that in my in my mobile wallet until they did an update on the wallet, and I like completely reloaded it, and then I could finally get my bitcoin out of there hmm. um i th i think after that i've only put bitcoin in, in a, on a mobile wallet one time and it was uh mycelium because i really like mycelium but but yeah that just shows like, like you know mobile wallets aren't really this far from the safest option you have in terms of storing your bitcoin yeah they really they're they are what their developers it, make them out to be the developers make a shoddy product, then you're, you're basically, I mean, it, there's, there's a really good analogy to be made with physical actual fiat paper money wallets. You wouldn't carry your paper money and coins around with a wallet that has holes in it or which is like hanging off your body somewhere for anyone you walk by to kind of slip their fingers in there and, and pull something out. And, uh, so like, the 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 thing that people like bit people in the bitcoin space really have to learn to do especially new people new people you gotta like do your research find out which wallets are reliable and secure and that actually lets you hold your private keys right there on the device for you um because otherwise otherwise someone else is holding your money technically uh or it's or it's is at risk of of um, being hacked by a white hat or black hat hacker, so people definitely got to do their research before uh, trusting their money literally with some random code that some random person wrote that is not necessarily reliable. Yep. So next topic. Yeah. What do we got next? Um, next, let's talk about. Reddit's cryptocurrency plans to create a crypto asset for the Reddit social media platform. They announced this a couple months ago that they were going to do something like this. They raised some funding from important people like Snoop Dogg and some other <laughs> high profile investors. But uh, new details have started to emerge about what their plans are going to be. Uh, the guy who they hired to do this is named Ryan X. Charles, and he originally came from. BitPay. He was an engineer at BitPay before moving on to Reddit. And uh, he revealed in some comments in a Reddit thread uh, kind of what they're, what they're really like looking into in terms of what they can do with a 
Bitcoin or cryptocurrency based asset that gets traded on the Reddit platform. And uh, I'll just go through some of the things that they considered. They considered using colored coins on the Bitcoin blockchain, side chains on the Bitcoin blockchain, counterparty and master coin, which are also both in the Bitcoin blockchain, um, Ethereum, which is separate, Stellar, Ripple, Next, and open transactions. All of those last ones are separate blockchains, kind of like altcoins, uh, separate payment payment systems. So they've considered all of these possibilities for creating a crypto asset for uh, for Reddit, but they've so far, or he really, he's the only person, he's the main guy, Ryan Charles. He's kind of narrowed it down to just colored coins or side chains to create this uh, new crypto asset. For trading on Reddit, and um, yeah, pretty pretty interesting. Like uh, the plans aren't really set in stone yet; they're really just considering all their options at this point. But uh, they're trying to do this right. They're doing this carefully. They're trying to make the right decision about which platform to use, what would be best for their uh, for their plans, and what they want to do with Reddit. And Really, like this is this is the seed of a of an awesome project that's going to get built in the in the coming months. So, definitely for sure, it's not going to be like a fully independent altcoin. It's going to be ninety nine percent sure that it's not going to be an independent altcoin. They okay. haven't totally ruled it out, but he said that uh, he would he would much prefer to use the Bitcoin blockchain. Yeah, I think that would. That would probably make it more secure, um, because because then wouldn't you have like the Bitcoin mining network to to uh, secure it? Right. Or, yeah, you've got the whole proof yeah. of work uh, mining algorithm backing that, and you can't rewind the blockchain uh, enough transactions to to duplicate transactions or whatever uh, without having hundreds of millions of dollars worth of computing hardware to to do that. So. That's one of the main reasons they want to go after the the Bitcoin blockchain for this. I think this is going to be a really cool way to experiment with like possible future methods of uh, trading stocks because mm. I, because that's what this is the the whatever coins they an ownership over like a fraction of a share and. Um, in the reddit corporation and uh i don't i don't know if they've actually done their ipo yet but if if they haven't they're going to and then like they're going to take a portion of the of the shares they issue in their ipo and put those into this uh like cryptocurrency scheme Mm. and uh distribute it somehow to redditors and then they can like you know trade them uh back and forth like tip each other basically for making good quality comments uh, or buy them buy them and sell them uh, yeah. and it's all going to be done on a blockchain so it's going to be you know frictionless instant uh you know trustless you you don't have to go through a broker or anything um yeah e- those guys are out of it, business yeah even even the online uh brokerage services where it's like all like uh automated um or whatever like you trade even they yeah, it's stuff like E Trade and uh, TD Ameritrade, all those online things. Even they take like a pretty hefty commission fee. It's not going to happen with blockchain-based uh, trading platform. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, ex- little experiment for trading uh, company stocks. And yeah. it's, I think, you know, I think. Um, Patrick Byrne, who who is he working with with this with their decentralized stock market? Who... Yeah, yeah, Patrick Byrne um, is working with uh, Counterparty. Yeah, and Counterparty. Their, their project is called Medici. The whole decentralized stock market they're trying to build. I I think they're probably going to be paying close attention to this because I think it's I think this is a lot like what they're trying to do. It's just going to be you know a really fast and efficient way to trade the ownership of stocks. And uh, it, they're, it's they're doing it through the blockchain, which is you know the best way to transfer ownership of uh, information. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping they kind of. I want to. I really want to see like a, a button in Reddit comments right next to like report, give gold and reply. Also give Bitcoin little button, and then also give whatever their their coin is going to be, whatever their asset is going to be called. Uh, so you can give really like any any kind of uh, form of money you want. You can either give Reddit stock or actual Bitcoin uh, uh, money to people in comments. And um, that's that's one of the things they're really looking into in terms of possibilities of this. Uh, this is, I just want to clarify, this is like super, super early stages. This is all basically speculation of what they, what they might do, but, uh, colored, colored coins is a possibility. Side chains, it, whether they can do side chains or not really depends on how fast, uh, side chains get implemented into the Bitcoin blockchain. Cause those things were really just formally announced, um, about a month or two ago and no real work has been done yet in terms of uh, making them actually usable uh, for average people using Bitcoin. Um, so I don't know if they'll be able to use uh, side chains in time, but I like they should consider Counterparty as well as a serious possibility for creating that asset. I mean, I I have already created a couple of my own imaginary assets using Counterparty. I experimented with this. A few weeks ago, um, I I sent like two dollars worth of Bitcoin onto Counterparty. I signed up and uh, I created my own um, asset called Dragon Balls uh, <laughs> on Counterparty. And there's only seven of them, seven, <laughs> seven of these coins. And um, right now I have all of them, but I I'm not able to make a wish yet uh, using using that asset. You haven't so. brought anybody back to life. Yeah, no, and I'm I'm not immortal yet either. So, uh, so I'm still working on how I can code that ability into those Dragon Balls. Um, but hey, the Counterparty system is is pretty amazing. You can create any any like asset you want. You can't do anything magical, obviously, like making people live forever or bringing people back to life. Not yet, at least. Um, but re you can create any asset that represents anything in the real world. And that could be that could be pretty pretty good too for Reddit's cryptocurrency. But yeah, they're just considering all these options right now. And uh, Ryan X Charles seems like a pretty pretty smart dude to handle this. And uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> like this this is the big story of of Reddit's like hiring thing. They they just came out with this with a blog post that said, hey, we hired these six six new people to to work on new things for the website. But uh, all anyone's really talking about in the Bitcoin space <laughs> really is the cryptocurrency engineer yep. and what he's going to do. So, yeah, pretty interesting stuff on the way from Reddit. Yeah, I'm excited to see how it plays out because, like I said, I think it's a um, cool new experiment for trading stocks. And also, uh, this could be, if it's successful, this might be uh, something to replace the Reddit gold system. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, Reddit Gold can't really handle like microtransactions at this point. Can't I don't think you can really send something below five dollars uh, to another user. Uh, dollars per month. How much is it? I think it's it, it's like um it's like a subscription based thing. So you can get it for like three months, six months, twelve months. Uh, and the cheapest option is a one month subscription, and it's three dollars a month. And um, it's basically just a way to fund Reddit because people can buy gold and they get some extra features on their account. Um, and, the mo and the money goes to Reddit so they can fund their operations. So if they, if they can work out a way to like where people can buy, uh, like continuously buy these, these coins and they're, they're just like issue fractions of stock continuously as the coins are being bought then the then the money goes directly to the company um and then you have these you know coins circulating and they'll of course establish your own exchange rate yeah whatever yeah. that's a whole that's a whole different discussion but yeah it seems it seems like they could take it's a way they could fund their operations to uh to replace and maybe uh use it to replace the gold system right yeah 
something a little bit more decentralized, a little bit more uh, versatile in terms of what uh, ter- what kinds of value you can transfer at a time. And uh, yeah, uh, basically upgrade the monetary incentive system that cur- currently exists on Reddit. Um, speaking of uh, monetary incentives on social media, or kind of social media. Ah, a good transition there. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, let's talk about gems. Gems, this new uh, social messaging application that is starting to come out. There's a lot of marketing behind it. They've get, been getting a lot of coverage on pretty much every single um, coin news website. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. They're <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, it, there's there's a lot of marketing behind them, and basically, I'll just kind of sum this up for for our listeners: is they're trying to create a messaging application for like a website and also mobile phones and mobile devices that uses their proprietary um, cryptocurrency to basically incentivize users to message each other. They can send the money between each other, and it also uh, uh, Advertisers can only contact you and send you advertisements if they pay with that currency to send the money to you. So in that way, it's theorized to cut back on spam because if anyone wants to, wants to spam you, they'll have to pay actual money to do it. Um, what do you what do you think about gems and uh, this product that is coming out soon? I think it's. Pretty interesting, actually. There have been several projects that have tried to um, make instant messaging and text messaging uh, more anonymous uh, by using encryption. Mm. And there have also been several social networking alternatives to Facebook um, that have like tried to make the ads a little less intrusive and imposing. And there's one in particular that I've been seeing recently. I can't remember what it's called, but they actually do um, pay you for like accepting um, banner ads and things like that on their, Mm. you know, on their social network platform. And uh, this kind of like rolls both of those into one thing. Now, where I am kind of disappointed by it is that it's just a messaging app. When I when I first heard about it, I thought it was going to be like a whole social network. Yeah, like a Facebook kind of thing where you have a profile and, and stuff like that. Right. But from what I understand, it's just going to be instant messaging unless I just, you know, read it wrong or something. Yeah, I mean, they do mention the words social networks all across their website. Like right in the middle of their website, they say taking back social networks the Bitcoin revolution reclaimed currency from the control of traditional establishments. It's time we do the same for social networks. Why let companies profit from the networks we build? Um, so maybe that's down in, in the pipeline somewhere and they're just going to come out with a messaging app first. But um, I look, if, if they really do implement like an actual social network that is encrypted, that is private and doesn't have ads unless you are willing to see ads and, basically um get paid to see ads basically by those advertisers then um that's that's huge if they if they manage to do this this is there's a lot of potential in this project i'm just skeptical because there's no actual product out yet there's no there's no app even though they they say on the website um that this is a this is a social this is a free mobile app for iOS and Android. It makes instant messaging with friends fun, simple, and secure, and profitable. Um, it seems like an uh, inaccurate sentence because it says it is a free mobile app available on iOS and Android, but it's not. It's not, not available yet. Yep, I've tried to find it on the Play Store because uh, I, I like I wanted to you know try it out and do a review on it, and um, but uh, it's it's not there on on the Play Store. So that's um, that's kind of shady considering that they've already started their crowd sale for their token, mm-hmm. for their token coin. Um, but the, actually the reason why I wanted to bring this up on the, 
just they recently announced a few days ago that they would be partnering with the College Crypto Network, which I've never heard of it before. But I, it's some, it's some like network that help that promotes cryptocurrencies on college campuses. Yeah. And um, College Crypto Network is going to be promoting gyms on um, the 150 campuses that are part of the network across the world. Um, so that that's why I wanted to bring it up because that I that's big news i guess for gyms um but also going back to it actually not being available yet they've they started their their crowd sale they're only 15 days into it and they've already got 50 percent of their funding goal and there's still 28 days left yeah so there's people giving money to gyms and um, I don't, you know, I don't think they're actually getting anything for it yet because the app isn't available yet. So I don't. Yeah. And not and even I, like a wallet is available yet for like storing right. the gems if, if people are getting them. Right. Because I, I think the, the gems wallet is actually in the messaging app. Mm. So it, it, we, we could be totally wrong about this, but from, you know, the information that I have about it, they that anybody has about it it's that it's it it seems like people are giving their money up front but they're not getting anything immediately in return so they just have to trust that they're going to launch the app yeah um, and you know that they meet that their kinda, funding goal that kind of like runs parallels a little bit with the ethereum i ico that happened a couple months ago where the ethereum guys sold 15 million dollars worth of ether uh, to early investors, early adopters of, of Ethereum. And that still, at, at this point, Ethereum is not out and usable for those people yet. It has not officially launched. People don't actually have their Ether yet. So, I mean, there's precedent in the industry for companies and organizations kind of doing like an IPO type offering before there's no product available yet. And I, so, you know, I definitely understand. I know why people are buying into this early because there's a lot of potential in the project if it comes out but at the same time like um i i want i want to see the actual product i want like i want to use it i actually want to use it and find out what it's all about all the hype like there's a lot of hype right now for gems there's a lot of hype and um no product for to show for it uh, so I'm, I'm going to stay on the fence until there's an actual product out. Cause how are you going to say, how are you going to say that, oh, we're going to get college, college kids on board with this. It's going to go viral on college campuses. We're going to market it, market it to them. Um, Coindesk had like an article a couple days ago of how girls are going to jump on board in droves onto gems because it has a pink logo and it's a, and it's a logo of a, of a diamond or something. <laughs> And it's a That's social dumb. currency or something. Well, um, okay. I think uh, I think it's if we're talking about you know college campuses. I, I think if it gets popular on college campuses, it'll be to you know privately organize parties and and stuff like that. That would be without, pretty cool. That'd be pretty you cool. know without being snooped on by the cops or the campus itself. They they won't be able to yeah. like. There's not going to be any like Twitter feed that they can just browse and right. be like, oh, hey, these guys are tweeting about this party. Yeah, or uh, a Facebook event or something like that. Yeah, it's public. It's uh, it's all going to be encrypted and and private. So that one use for it. Another use for it on the, I guess, a little bit shadier side is it might be useful for you know some drug dealers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, to avoid being um, spied on by the police yeah uh regardless of what our viewers think about drugs that is very possible and, and you know it could happen whether they like it or not no yeah i mean so building on top of that like that idea right there like just imagine the possibilities of this like like everyone gets on their gems app and starts messaging each other in like a chat room type of thing and it's like okay the party's at this guy's house tonight let's all send him like ten thousand gems so that he can have enough money to buy like a a gigantic bag of cocaine, yeah, and then or, like a a twelve pack of beer, and then yeah. like a few a few grams of Molly or something, and we're gonna have a great time tonight. Everyone sends the gems to this guy, he gets it all, it's all encrypted, um, 
and and then maybe sends that to some other drug dealer he knows to get to, to, <laughs> to get the stuff and then boom party that night for all these college kids like that's the possibility here if if they do this thing right and that's not necessarily a bad thing it's it's just more freedom for adults yeah um i personally don't think they should do that but yeah you know, who am i uh, you know i'm just somebody who doesn't party that's who i like am. they're gonna do it anyway so, right we might as well let them do it in an easy well, safe I, way I actually, where they can't get abused by the police state i actually um there's been some like an argument servicing like in the whole like you know libertarian community recently that the why this whole crazy college party scene like sexual abuse and all this the reason why it like emerged and has gotten so intense um is that the drinking age is 21 and half of college students um you know freshmen and sophomores are below that age uh because there's you know people are, have said that you know back in the 70s before they raised the drinking age to 21 when it was 18 college kids didn't have these huge parties they just uh if they wanted to go drinking they would just go to a bar and do it legally yeah. um but now they have to do it secretly they have to do it on the weekend um, you got to do as much and, as they can as fast yeah, as they can while they still have gotta, a chance you got to get as much as you can um before you get busted before the party gets broken up by the cops and so yeah. that yeah that's that's an argument for for why uh you know the party scene is so bad why such bad things happen people die from you know drinking too much doing too much drugs mm -hmm. it, it's it's because they're just not allowed to so they have to be sneaky about it and do as much as they can at one time because they might yeah. not get to do it for another week so yeah and then you there's but, also the issue where just random crap is is mixed in with with a drug that they expected to take and then there's just random shit in there yep. that is super dangerous for them um because yeah, dealers cut it so they can sell more with yeah you know with actually less of the drug but yeah but yeah um so you know all that all that aside that's probably not likely to change anytime soon so gyms could make it a little um less risky for people to you know do illegal things uh especially if you're a party kid in college. But yeah, I I definitely wish they had at least some kind of like alpha or beta release so we could see how it works because people are giving them money. People have yeah. given them a lot of money, apparently, 50% of their funding goal. And there's, uh, you know, as far as I can tell, there's nothing to show for it because there's nothing available on any app stores yet. So that's what I think about yeah. it. Uh, they've damn they've raised over a hundred and eleven thousand dollars and that piece of news money. came out on december 1st so since then it's since then they they might have gotten pretty close already to their to their funding goal um dang that's yeah that's a lot of money i'm 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 really curious now i'm curious to see how this when this comes out and uh like i i, I hope that it ends up as an actual social network um eventually but hey if it comes out and it's, and it's just a secure messaging service where you can send money between people uh within that service then that sounds pretty great to start with and that actually might be worth um over a hundred thousand dollars so looking forward to that to yep. that release we'll see yeah so we got anything else to talk about uh no actually i think huh? i think that's pretty much it for this week um yeah close this out uh thank you guys for listening to the coin brief podcast episode number 26 this is your open source for digital currency news uh we'll be back next week with some more cryptocurrency developments in the space and uh what's going on with reddit and and gems and blockchain and all these all these amazing um innovative companies that are doing their best to um play an integral role in this in this new decentralized um, economy that everyone's building below below the fold of the establishment economy so yeah thanks you guys for listening um, follow us on twitter subscribe to the youtube channel comment with what you think and um yeah we'll see you guys next week thanks for listening